Okay. So I'm just gonna play this. <laughs> So he hello everyone, uh, I'm Betim Beya and I'm the first Microsoft MVP and only one for the moment from Albania. So since April this year and it has been like the best gift I could get for April's full day. So <laughs> and uh, you can contact me on LinkedIn. I will share the link, uh, the, the details later on in the chat. Or you can go ahead and read my blog, which is this website here for anyone who hasn't read it. Um, I have used the name Albanian XRM for quite a while now, and I will keep using that name for the open source community or for every activity I do in the community, basically to share the information about the Power Platform. And last, last year I organized uh, with a colleague of Diana, I organized the first Epina Day in Albania. And I just want to say hi to Edith for all the great effort she has done for that, that event too. And uh, currently I have, like, basically have a company in Albania. I have created it and we are focused on... Um, doing implementations let's say for the power platform and uh, doing uh, migration to the cloud and the company is called Schoenlein which means go online and I won't talk anymore about this and I will go ahead and show you the schedule for today so what I'm gonna show today is the uh, how I built the stylet switch of Albanian XRMs, which is one of the uh, PCF components I've published in the PCF gallery. And basically I'm gonna show the, all the commands that need to be used to re recreate the same uh, component. And I will do that to show um, the components or the tools that I've been using to make sure that I produce a quality component. And up until now, those uh, configurations and tools have not been made open source. And I will share the repository with the links uh, and the code of today's presentation, basically. Uh, I will share that during this presentation. And I will show how to use Storybook.js and just uh specific stuff about the database solution to deploy the component uh, the way i produce source maps and how fiddler can help us with that the autoresponder feature of fiddler and then i will even share part of the pipeline basically i have created uh everything in a separate let's say uh organization in uh, a separate project in azure devops and i will make that public so each one of you can see every line of code so i will start uh but by, by by the way the render that you see as the background is uh, the render of my new office it's not the real one the real one is better <laughs> Um, so, to start, right, we need uh, basically a directory where we want to create our component. So, uh, we should use uh, source control to track our changes and to simplify our life, right? Knowing some history of changes. Uh, later on, when we have problems, helps really, really a lot to find uh, the solution in a quicker way, right? Because we can uh, match those commits or those uh, snapshots, let's call them in history, uh, 
uh, we can associate those to our tasks in Azure DevOps and we can recreate the whole story and know in an easier way what happened and why we have a, a bug, right? So the first thing we should do is initialize our repository. I'm using Git, but you can use whatever uh, you like, like Subversion or Team Foundation Server. Choose your own technology. And uh, once we have initialized our uh, repository, we should uh, go ahead and create our component, right? So we can use the pack uh command line ut utilities and we can use the pack ptf in it uh i will share the presentation slides too and in the presentation slides you will see these same commands as notes right so that you can uh, easily re uh, replicate if you want to create some muscle memory you can easily replicate these steps right or you can just go ahead and study the code that is published. Um, I am going to use the same code for the component that I have shared in uh, GitHub time ago. So I'm not going to write the code for the PCF component. I'm going to show only the tools that I haven't shown yet. So uh, once we have created our component, we will basically delete the folder because I will reuse the one from GitHub. So I will create, uh, I will add the submodule to that GitHub uh, repository. And the command is uh, written right here. So, and this is how basically I've been um, sharing uh, partial information, right? I've shared how the component is being built by, but I haven't shared the, uh, all, all the tools and all the customizations that I'm using behind the scenes to make it work as I, as I like. Right now I'm starting to share part of those tools in a new basically project. So I am sharing the right amount of information, right? So you won't see the all, all the tools that I'm using, but you will see everything from what I promised to share, like to increase the quality of your components. So as soon as we have our uh, component, because I added it as a, I'm, I'm, I'm just showing slides, guys. I, I won't show the Visual Studio code yet. I will show it later. So uh, we have our component and now we need to install our dependencies, right? And this component is using the material design. And uh, I've done that just because uh, it offers an easy to customize switch, basically and you can add the styles in an e easy way. So uh, you install these dependencies and as soon as we have those, uh, basically what I like to do is try to do as much commits as possible. So I've, I've put a slide in here just to show you that you should uh, frequently commit so that you can see your history Please choose better <laughs> commit messages than initial commit or fixed bug. Give some context to what the changes were, but uh, I'm just showing as a demonstration. Then we need to install basically the types for TypeScript for React and React DOM. Since we uh, don't have them out of the box, um, because I'm not using uh, the virtual component, basically. And I'm not using the virtual component because uh, uh, the style switch that I'm using from the material design is uh, ne needs React 17. And the virtual component is using virt uh, React 
uh, 16.8 so it's not compatible and I'm using this other one so uh, as soon as I have the types I can generate the types for my PCF component uh, by executing npm run refresh types and we're not there yet because what I usually like to do is uh, I like to basically uh, re refer to my components or to my code in the repository by using a name not by using the relative paths I have even written a blog about this and let me just copy this if I can share it easily no okay I will just share that uh, relative path blog in the chat so this is the blog post that I've written uh, about why I don't like the relative paths right and the whole idea is to make uh, my code look the same way even when I'm writing tests or when I'm referencing the code inside my PCF component so if I have separate React components in there and when I import those I like to have the imports look the same way so that I uh, can uh, understand better what, what component am I using because if you have different uh, depths on your structure then you might get like uh, in some place there is like uh, I go back two folders and then go into components and choose my component or I go back one folder and go into components and choose my component so it gets a little bit complicated to understand right away where I'm at so as soon as I can uh, do these modifications on uh, my TS config and I like to write the imports with this uh, synthetic default imports and basically as you can read in the blog post you need to use this base URL and paths to make sure that this uh, trick works like to write the imp uh, imports in that way after which I I'm not ready yet to do the run of my components so to do the PCF uh, start basically so I need to uh, instruct my uh, harness to use uh, something in the webpack right and that is to uh, configure the the same path that I'm, I was showing in the in this uh, in this slide to use those in the webpack uh, bundle so I need to install these two the webpack and to install this TS config paths webpack plugin and I need to create a new file to enable the custom webpack in my PCF so I will create this feature config.json and save it in my root directory and then I need to modify to create a custom webpack basically config and to just modify the result for this to work and I noticed that uh, in the latest version of the PCF scripts uh, they have improved a lot the way that this uh, custom uh, webpack config gets applied to the real one basically that uh, the framework is using under the hood so we don't even need these extensions in here because it's doing uh, it's using the, the package that is a little bit smarter than just the sign that was before so as soon as I've done this I'm ready to run my test harness basically so I can execute npm run start and uh, I won't show the test harness yet but I will go on to show some other tricks 
and the first trick is that uh, basically I like to test my React components uh, more separately than the test harness. So I'm going to install Storybooks. I'm going to uh, basically initialize the Storybooks for my project. And at this point, we have a lot of packages in our package.json. So we have referenced a lot of packages. And we have React and we have uh, the Webpack. So Storybooks is, uh, has this initialization script that is smart enough to understand what our setup is so that it configures itself basically with what we need. And it will even ask if you want to apply the ESLint uh, plugin fix because they, uh, they can uh, offer uh, the best practices for Storybook. Uh, I have said no in this project because uh, this requires the JavaScript uh, the last time that I checked and uh, config. And I'm using the uh, JSON one, yes, uh, yeslint.rt. But uh, it, it can be fixed. It's not a real problem. I just am not showing it right now. So what I've done is I've initialized um, uh, storybooks with that command. And the other step that I need to do always related to those uh, relative imports that I don't like. Uh, I need to modify my uh, storybook main.js, where, uh, which is the configuration file for storybooks. And I just need to add this uh, plugin, the tsconfigpath webpack plugin. And I need to add this uh, plugin to my storybook webpack. And you can do that by adding this configuration. It's it has been explained in the blog post too. So at this point, we are ready to do npm run storybook. But we will, if we do the run storybook now, we will see the default example, let's say, of storybooks. We are not seeing our component yet. So we can go ahead and remove all that. Uh, demo let's say from storybooks and create our stories for our component and i have since i said that i will share this code basically with everyone i am showing uh, just a small piece of the code here and we can do the npm run storybook and this time we will see our example this this uh, particular one i want to show it even live so i have visual studio in the other screen basically and uh, it's just taking its time to build that's why i did the slides basically and didn't want to execute all the commands because uh, with npm packages, you might never know how much time it takes to generate everything. Or they might have updated it at the last minute or lots of other cool things that can happen, right? So this is my storybook. Let me just zoom in for a little bit. And I have my component in here that I can test, right? Or I can test a different style for my component and check how that goes and i can write basically especially for the data set uh, components where we need a lot of data and we need to check different use cases and the possibilities are endless or we have uh, our component which might have other small smaller components inside and we can test those even separately and then together and i won't talk anymore about storybook if you like the idea you can go ahead and read there's a lot of information there's a lot of stuff that can be configured and i'm seeing in here that i've put just a login here that i'm changing 
basically the state so i'm clicking in this or i can try with a different state from what this is offering or i can remove the false image so it will change and whatever you feel like to test all right so this this is my uh, let's say advice for ev everyone which is working with the pcf components they should use storybooks if they want to test visually test let's say uh, their components and this was the component uh, the react component it's not the pcf integrated one but it's uh 99 of the work right because i usually like to have uh the index file let's say that uh in our component um uh, where i wire all the events and everything else is uh react based and doesn't have any knowledge about its context uh meaning that it doesn't know that it's a component created for dataverse so i wire all the events um or do the translations for the dataverse in the index file or in other files but outside of the component so the component has uh, pr the properties which are platform agnostic basically so uh, this was the storybook story <laughs> so what we need to add next right we need to add unit test because storybook is interesting but it's uh, it's a visual test let's say or it's a manual test um, there can be automations using playwright to test basically your stories there are a lot of possibilities but uh, i prefer to have the just tests too for our components so i'm going to install everything that i need to to write those just tests so that I can unit test my component, not only use storybook or do an end-to-end -end testing, let's call it. Uh, so I will need to execute this to install the dependencies. And then I need to initialize my configuration for Jest. And we can use this, uh, since we are writing TypeScript and this was one of, of the dependencies, TSJest we can initialize it from that tool but it gives us a pretty simple uh, configuration always returning to the i don't like the relative import so i do some changes to the just config so I'm uh, doing this module name mapper basically to not have the relative imports. Um, I'm adding this uh, modification to our TS config, to the TS config that Jest uses to allow JS because of the packages that I have depend dependencies on. And uh, I change the test environment from node to JS DOM because I need to test the components visually and I will use the, I will do snapshot testing basically and I have added this uh, transform because I need to transform some of the files with TSGest because we are writing in TypeScript and React and uh, just doesn't understand those so it needs to use double to transform our packages but it ignores the node module so we need to add an ignore pattern to basically uh, add these modules that i'm uh, have dependencies on in those transforms and the material design package is one and Babel because there is something about uh, the runtime that gets included in the scripts that we need to transform also.
so once we have done this and we have i have added the test in here which i haven't shown but it's a simple test uh, we can run our test configuration and we can see that it it uh, will basically fail our test but it'll, it will execute our our tests so i have just a simple test here to show that it is possible i don't want to focus on uh, the proper way of writing tests or the proper way of writing the stories for the storybook I just want to show that it's possible to do it with the PCF components and please do it, right? Please try to increase the quality of your work because uh, I, I'm a huge fan of quality work. So you should be too. <laughs> so next one, I think we can go ahead and talk a little bit about the solution uh, so we need to uh, by following the demo of microsoft let's say the documentation you create a folder then you execute uh, this command to create your solution with your publisher name and your prefix after that you uh, my advice basically is to never deploy uh, unminified code into your uh, dataverse so and to you use always manage solutions for your components the reason is that your uh, your your components shouldn't be modified from dataverse right and the best way to do that is uh, by having it managed so when you deploy stuff that are unmanaged you have the freedom let's say to deploy uh, to, to do changes that go on track from your re release uh, life cycle let's say application and the idea is uh, the PCF component should always be minified into your dataverse and to do the solution checker basically we will execute it from the command line or from the pipelines that I will show a little bit later on so we need to do this managed and we need to install other dependencies to improve let's say our webpack build to make sure that we are always minifying our code so that's the Tercer webpack plugin and we need to add basically in our webpack config uh, we other other let's say package that I have in there but I didn't mention uh, correctly is the this one the revision I have written another blog post which is the one uh, sorry let me just share it in teams uh, about the source maps yes. Here. so uh, my idea is that uh, we should always minify the code but we should always uh, be able to debug our code correctly right so to do that we need the source maps always and i don't deploy the source maps into dataverse i don't use the eval or other uh, ways of having the source maps which are with the same file that is our our script because it is uh, basically uh, nullifying our efforts to have a performant a component to by minifying the source code right so the source maps as you can read in the blog post uh, should be hosted uh, in in a, what i call source map repository right and i have shown the way how to do it in there 
and we can do that by using this uh, source map dev group plugin and we ba basically my components are using this uh, website let's call it to host the component uh, source maps and it's versioning everything based on my uh, git uh, tag right so every time i build the component i know in which version i am and i have that version in my source map so if i uh, if i'm in development phase or in the development environment when i deploy my my component i will have uh version one right or version three because i'm in dev and i'm i've gone ahead if i go into my uat environment i might have version two of my component version three is not there yet and to be able to test that component which has minified code i need the source maps and the ways are two right i need to build locally use uh, uh, I, I need to, to build locally and then to use Fiddler to serve me the correct source map. But I need to rem know which version it was. I need to re uh, revert my code, basically the developer in the development machine to the correct version, build it, have the source maps ready and do the test with Fiddler. This way we can deploy those source map in a protected <laughs> uh, website so that only we can have access to it and uh, we can uh, basically test the correct version because for each version we will see uh, the, the right source maps. And in production we will have version 1 for example so in every environment we can see the correct version so we we have uh, built our component with the uh, source maps and configured it now we have uh, i missed a step before right i created the solution but i didn't have add the reference to my component and i can do that with this command and then I can build this uh, solution, which will build the PCF component in a production, let's say with a production environment variable so that it can uh, minify everything. And I will see the right component deployed when I will deploy the, this. As I briefly mentioned, uh, we can use Fiddler because uh, during our development, as Diana was showing before me, uh, Fiddler can help us a lot or can help the developer like uh, have uh, the component in the Dataverse environment, dev environment, and uh, we can serve our local files not the ones that I, I have deployed so that we don't need to repeat that deployment process every time we have our component in there we modify the files with the local ones we test and as soon as we are happy with our uh, result we commit those changes and we push those into our repository when the the pipeline will trigger and we'll build our uh, package in the same way that I was showing in here. We'll build our package and we'll have an artifact ready for deployment with the correct solution, which is uh, minified. It's, uh, and um, it's a managed solution so that it's ready for deployment in production. So the other, since we have our source maps and we have uh, Fiddler configured, even in our test harness, we can use uh, Fiddler to basically serve as the source map, uh, which hasn't been deployed yet into the source map repository. 
but we can see it locally so as soon as uh, when we are testing even locally with the test harness we can see those source maps so we can see the original source even though the test uh, the code is minified even in the test harness the next step is to go ahead and for me to show you the pipelines right so i've done some uh, other slides with the pipelines while i create them so this is the url that i will share even in the chat in a while and this is public and you can see how this code and this pipeline works in there and uh, you choose where your code is for me the code for the uh, the parts that i'm showing right now is in azure devops and as i shown in the beginning i have the component code in github right and i use that as a sub, sub module and uh, this is the way like when you are doing consulting as i'm working in consulting uh, it's a way to share part part of the information that is needed in the client like the component uh, is part of uh, what you have sold to the client but the tools that you use to improve the quality and everything else those are intellectual intellectual property of the consultancy right so you are not selling the tools you are selling the product and that's a way to do it so i'm gonna choose the repository which is this one and you all all of you can see it if you are brave enough to type it if you don't want to wait go ahead <laughs> and i will choose the starter pipeline because i have a ready-made pipeline let's say it. so i will basically paste that in, into this and if you see the history when you access this pipeline um personally even though i configure pipelines like uh, most of the time uh, there are a lot like uh, trial and error right because uh, you don't have test for this so a small typo then it, it errors uh, missing configuration it doesn't show until it runs and then it errors so there are lots of errors and I agree with Jordi that I'm in a hate, love-hate relationship with YAML too, but not for YAML, for the tools that we need to configure <laughs> using YAML. So I'm just uh, creating a commit with these changes. And uh, what I haven't shown yet is that uh, I'm using some service connections in there, right? And those service connections are the Dataverse connection, which I need to use for the uh, power, power app tools. And I use for the solution checker too, because in the pipeline, I have the solution, solution check and checker being run each time a build is triggered. And I have Azure and GitHub uh, for two reasons. Azure is for the source map repository and uh, the github is for publishing my since it's an open source component i have it part of the publish pipeline to create that solution and publish it as a release in github and those tests that i have shown before we can show the coverage of those tests in uh, in the pipeline too so you can see that in the in the pipeline run when you access this repository instead in the release pipeline i haven't basically uh, created it in the in the open source version of it i have it only in this uh, closed source let's say but i want to show you how i did it I haven't released it because I have some information that I didn't want to share and I did like uh, remove some stuff in here. 
so the what what i need to do is like from the build pipeline i have uh written in a text file which was the commit id that uh, i built in the build pipeline so that i can use that commit id to uh, basically when i upload the file i can use that commit id to upload it in the correct folder so that uh, the and uh, i have explained it in the source map uh, blog post like uh, i have an azure fun uh, block storage azure function which is protected using access from cloudflare but you can do whatever you see fit i've done that which is a little bit complicated but it's costing me nothing that's why i've done it so we upload our map file each time we do a release right so if we do a release using the pipeline uh, that uh, component for a certain time will be at least in one environment right it might be in the in development environment it might be in uat seed depending on where uh, on how you are managing your this uh, your alm basically and when it is in uh, each environment it has this uh, reference to the commit id where it was built so it was uh, ask for their uh, proper file right so it's everything is mapped and uh, this was everything that i wanted to show uh, as, as techniques right that i'm using um, to, to improve the quality of my components and uh, i will leave this as a question and answers and uh, i if if the question is like uh, you need me to show some of those stuff like from visual studio code i can do that even so these uh, shoot your questions thank you very much betim okay so let's get started so david has the first question is there any way to inject a dataverse connection in storybooks or web api calls could be tested uh you can write basically plugins for storybooks so that you can somehow inject uh I wouldn't say a dataverse connection, but we could we could think about uh, let's say a faking library, same as fake XRM easy. But uh, I not that I'm aware of currently. But uh, that's yeah. that's why I mentioned uh, earlier, right? I try to separate the API calls and everything that is related to dataverse basically or to to canvas apps in a, a separate file which is different from my pcf uh, react component right so i have some translations happening from time to time or i have like uh, i have an action which uh, knows that by calling that action i get back some data as a promise or depending on how I need it, but uh, that specific implementation is external to the React component. And it's in the PCF file, right? In the index or something else, but it's not in the React component. So uh, when I do the testing for the storybooks, I'm somehow testing it uh, by having some mock mocks, right? Because I don't do the call, but I expect some data and I mock those in the stories. I don't know if it uh, was an answer for David or not. Thank you, Betim. Shafal is asking, this is a very informative, I must say. Is it similar to Azure DevOps pipeline or is it the same? No, it, it was an Azure DevOps pipeline, right? Great. And I mentioned that I have like, I have used two, two different repositories, right? Because uh, on uh, January this year, I open sourced the component but without open sourcing the build pipeline let's call it so everything that was related to the uh, webpack configuration 
to the storybooks, to the unit tests, that wasn't open source up until today. And uh, that's why I had two different uh, repositories. You can use only one, you can use only GitHub or only Azure DevOps, whatever you see fit on. And the same steps that I've implemented in Azure pipelines can be implemented as a GitHub Actions tool. Personally, I don't have uh, too much experience, let's say, with GitHub Actions yet, right? Because uh, I've been using Azure uh, pipelines for a whole lot of time, and then I uh, couldn't adapt, let's say, uh, because of the missing, for the moment, functionalities, right? Like posting those test uh, coverage uh, in a, in uh, GitHub Actions, it's a little bit more complicated. You need to use external services, basically. So it's what, uh, yeah. So Phil Cole is asking, when I am building multiple PCF controls into a single solution, I have to NPM CI to restore the NPM module for each control. This is really, really slow. Is there a better way in Azure DevOps pipelines? Um, so I have written uh, a blog, let's say, about the CDS project, right? Which is the solution project. And there can be something done in there, but it's not, uh, it's not supported, let's say, right? Microsoft says one, uh, one component, one solution, from what I'm aware of if uh, so that's the problem is that from the uh, platform it's not supported to have multiple components in the same solution and to do that you need to do some uh, ms build trickery basically so i haven't shared how to do that you can you can do it but it's it's not supported so that's why i'm not uh, applying it in my production code right i'm only having one solution one component i know you get lots of uh, solutions but this is how i've done it so i don't know if uh, phil cold was uh, happy with the answer thank you betty so um whilst we wait for some other questions coming through um just a reminder to everyone that Betim has offered, if there's anything that you want him to go through again yes. to show you in Visual Studio, please, please feel free to ask. Now, there is a question come through from Adam who's asking, how do you approach minifying code that is already deployed? Minifying code that is already deployed? You, you so substitute the code. How can you minify something that is already deployed? I don't know what... Uh, he's expecting, let's say, from the question. <laughs> so I think I, I think I haven't shown only one stuff, right? And I will do that right now. I have this dummy comp uh, dummy application, right? Canvas app. And uh, in, in here, this is, uh, as you can see, it's online. I don't have Fiddler open. I don't know how can I show it to you that I didn't have it open. And uh, if I open the dev tools, and you can see even though this is production, right? Being on Power Apps, I still see my TypeScript code. So I see my uh, beautified code, right? From the source maps. And this is the huge benefit that you get if you apply that uh, trick that I have shown in the in this demo or in the uh, in the blog. Basically, it it adds this line, right? So it's downloading the file from here. And uh, if I open a private window, which is not uh, logged in, so it's not allowed to download this file. I can show that your intellectual property is protected, right? So this is the one trick.
Thank you, Betim. OK. OK, so there are some questions around um, portals. So I've got a good I've got some good news um, for you shortly for those people who are asking about that. Uh, but there is a question oh, by yeah. Jim. Jim yeah. is asking the question. What does the network tab of the dev tool show while loading? It's not Fiddler, but something it was. It has what I need. Uh, what do you need me to filter? <laughs> so what does the network tab of the dev tool show while loading? It's not Fiddler. OK, so what is it? What what telemetry is that showing? Um, it's showing the standard. Um, objects. Yeah, I don't know what. Uh, what does. <laughs> Jim need yep. basically. So it looks yeah. Um, it's pretty standard. Not nothing. Uh, there is no trickery in here, right? I've I've uh, opened the other window just to show that it uh, it didn't download it from there, right? Because when I opened the in private window, if it was a fiddler, for example, it would basically just show me the package. Wouldn't. Ask me for credentials, right? Unless uh, there is some trickery in Fiddler that I'm not aware of to do conditional <laughs> access. Great stuff, uh, Betim. So some great feedback here um, from um, Diana. Great session. Phil calls in really cool stuff. Learned a lot. Um, thanks, Betim. Jordi is saying the network is the usual network calls like in any other dev browser tools. Um, OK. So thank you once again, Betim. It's a really great pleasure. Um, it's a really great pleasure to um, um, have you here today, uh, share, showcasing your insights. PCF development is, is still very new. So even I'd have to say, Betim, that you know, if, if you consider most Dynamics developers, right, you've been working in the industry for so many years, I'd say out of all the Dynamics developers out there, I'll say even till this day, I still feel that maybe only 1% or 2% um, are able to build or have tried building a PCF component. Um, so it's very important that, you know, um, the likes of yourself, trailblazers like yourself, Diana, um, everyone out there who's um, uh, Wilmer and, and everyone else out there who's really um, showing uh, the way to building uh, PCF controls uh, because it is uh, it is a, a new experience and and uh, learning is required for many of the existing um, dyna traditional dynamics developers um, um, in the industry, right? Would you agree, Betim? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so Betim, um, I, I know you're very much uh, um, active in the in the community, and uh, I'd just like you to um, share anything, any important information, news that you think uh, um, that you've been up to, or anything you'd like to share with the, with the wide audience. Yeah, I've uh, shared that. Let's say in the beginning of the presentation, right? I'm trying. I'm trying to be as much as possible active in the local community. Trying to build the local community, basically, because there is none, and uh, I'm I'm trying to do that like in each direction, right? Even by building my own company to have the proper funding because that's a problem too. And Albania is a small country, right? So it's even more difficult to find the right people or to find people if there are any. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to invest in students basically. So I'm offering internships to students to transform them into uh, power platform developers with this kind of quality that I've shown today, basically. And fantastic, yeah. For the unit testing on the backend, normally being the second contributor to fake XRM easy, which I can't wait for Jordi to show the in the next session 
the news uh, it's what I've been using and I always try to use right to uh, in, improve and to make sure that I'm producing uh, quality even in the backend in the plugins or uh, console applications or whatever tools I'm creating that connects to the dataverse and um, someone's asking can you please share the pub the public repo of course yeah, yeah great yeah if we could share it in the chat window that'd be great as well Yes. Okay then, Betim. Well, well, Betim, thanks for sharing that information. Um, thanks for all the great questions as well. Um, I think everyone is satisfied with with everything you've shown today, and uh, um, hopefully we will see you again. Uh, but next time, hopefully yeah. in person. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay, great stuff, Betim. Round of applause for Betim, everyone. Uh, thank, thank you, you so everyone. much. It's always great to have a session.